Limit of logarithmic functions. A simple logarithmic function is defined by y is equal to log of x base b if and only if x is equal to b raised to y where b is greater than 0 and b is not equal to 1. The domain of our function is the set of real numbers that is greater than 0. Most students have difficulty working on logarithms if they are seeing it for the first time. And so what you can do is you return to the definition of our log function. Look at that. Y is equal to log of X base B if and only if X is equal to B raised to Y. So the B here is the base of your exponential function. And the, the Y here is the exponent of B. And when you raise B to Y, it's equal to X. So when I was a student, when I saw logarithms for the first time, what I did is I transformed it to its exponential form. And it was easier to understand the meaning of logarithms that way. So for example, look at this. Log of x base 2 is equal to y. So you can write it as 2 raised to y is equal to x. So when you see this, why is log of 2 base 2 equal to 1? Well, because 2 raised to 1, okay, is equal to 2. How about log of 4 base 2? Why is that equal to 2? So this 2 here is the exponent. It is the exponent of 2, so that 2 raised to that exponent is equal to this. And so 2 squared is equal to 4. How about this? Log of 100 base 10 is equal to 2. Why is that so? Because 10 raised to 2 is equal to 100. So the base of our logarithm is any real number that is greater than 0. So it can be 0.5. So the logarithm of one-fourth base one-half, so this is one-half, is equal to two because one-half raised to two is equal to one-fourth. Can you recall the graph of the log function? When I first saw this, something like many, many years ago, I know I can easily see the graph of the exponential function, but, but I cannot see in my mind what should be the graph of the log function. So, so this one is the graph of the natural exponential function and the graph of the natural logarithmic function. And the reason why I am showing them together is because exponential and logarithms or the exponential and logarithmic functions they are inverse functions of of one another the inverse function for y is equal to e to the x is y is equal to ln of x and so this is what you can do okay so if you want to see if you want to visualize the graph of ln of x and you, you find it difficult to see in your mind. This is what you do. You begin from the graph of y is equal to e to the x. So right away, you know the graph of our natural exponential function. And what you do next is you draw this line. This is the line y is equal to x. So, so that is the line that makes a perfect 45 degree angle with your horizontal axis. And what do you do next? This is what you do. You will fold you will fold your plane or your paper across this line, okay? And, and the image, our function y is equal to e to the x will, will make across that line in this side of your plane is going to be the graph of y is equal to ln of x. Now, what if our base is between 0 and 1? So this is the graph, okay? Again, how do you produce that graph? Most students, they would think two times, three times, four times before they can sketch the graph of, of a logarithmic function whose base is 
between 0 and 1 because this it's a logarithm of x base 0.5 so what you do is something like this you sketch the graph of y is equal to 0.5 raised to x or or y is equal to 1 over e raised to x so the base is between 0 and 1 this one is less than 1 so it's going to give you something like this a function that decreases and uh, it approaches the horizontal asymptote as x approaches infinity. And what do you do next? This is what you do. You draw this line. What do you do next? You fold your plane across this line. And the image, the image this curve will make across that line is going to be the graph of your log function when when the base is between 0 and 1. Based on the graph, when our base is greater than 1, our function is an increasing function. Okay, look at that. As x approaches infinity, the log of x base b goes to infinity. It increases without bound. When b is between 0 and 1, what you have there is a decreasing function. As x approaches infinity, as x approaches infinity, our uh, logarithmic function decreases without bound. It goes towards negative infinity. Theorem 1.8, limit loss of logarithmic functions. So the limit of log of x base b as x approaches a is just equal to log of a base b provided that a is greater than 0. Why do we have that kind of restriction? Because look at this. Look at the domain of your, of your logarithmic function. The domain of your log function is the set of positive real numbers. So log of x base b as x approaches a would have a value if and only if a is a positive real number. That is why we have the restriction that, that a must be greater than zero. So the limit of log of f of x base b as x approaches 0 is going to be log of f of a base b again provided that f of a is greater than 0. So when our base is greater than 1, look at that, the limit of our function, the limit of log of x base b as x approaches infinity is infinity. And it is easy to see that from the graph. Look at this. As x approaches infinity, the limit of our log function when the base is greater than 1 approaches infinity. On the other hand, when x approaches 0 from the right, look at that. So why do, uh, why do we have to make that kind of uh, restriction, x approaches 0 from the right? Because when we are working with log, log of x base b, x cannot approach 0 from the left. It has no value when x is coming from the left of 0. And so, as x approaches 0, the limit of this function, log of x base b, decreases without bound. It goes towards negative infinity. Now, when the base is between 0 and 1, let's say, for example, 1 half, the limit of our log of x base b as x approaches infinity is negative infinity. It decreases without bound. On the other hand, when x approaches 0 from the right, the value of our function approaches, approaches infinity. It increases without bound. 